Hi everyone, so I wanted to talk about a Bible study that I'm currently doing. It's by Priscilla Schreier called Jonah Navigating a Life Interrupted. And um, it is a really good Bible study and um, I just finished week one, but I wanted to go through what I've learned. And she goes week by week and it's a very short book. It's about six or seven um, six or seven chapters and this goes up to week six and um, so today I just wanted to do an introduction of Jonah the book of Jonah and you know what it's about and uh, I'm gonna do I guess try and do um, do this daily and um, I really am enjoying reading this and also reading her her um, Bible study so the book of Jonah has been described as a parable and a satire and is um, known as, you know, famous for being known as a biblical fish story. You know, um, Jonah was swallowed by a fish, a large fish. And Jesus used this story of Jonah as an, an analogy of his own impending death and resurrection. You know, as we know, Jesus Christ, he... Um, died and resurrected in three days and um he after he died he resurrected three days three days after he died and um there's two historical realities in the book of jonah the historical historical experience of jonah in the belly of the great fish and second is the historical experience of the repentance of the people of Nineveh based on the preaching of Jonah. So next is the author and date of the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah does not specifically state who wrote it, but um, it was, you know, thought traditionally thought that it was written by Jonah as his own report of his foolish behavior and his final statement of coming to terms with the divine will and likely possibility that God had for him. And Jonah was a prophet and uh, he lived in the 8th century BC. And um, the book of Jonah presents the prophet in a negative light as it is as it highlights his disobedience to the Lord leading the reader to reject Jonah's attitude and actions. The prophet Jonah was from Gath Hemphir, a town in the Territony, ter oh, I can't read right now, a town in the Territony, I keep saying Territony, it's Territory of Zebulun. And that was several miles northeast, northeast of Nazareth. And Jonah's name means dove. So the historical setting of Jonah is by the time of the ministry of Jonah, Assyria was preoccupied with the mountain tribes of, I'm going to have a hard time saying this word, Urathu, Urathu, or Urathu. It's spelled U-R-A-T-U. So I'm um, having trouble reading that word. And by 745 BC, Israel rejoiced at the preoccupation of Assyria and they aggressively pursued a policy of defense by strengthening their fortified cities, fortified cities, building up the army and developing international relations. So the principal message of Jonah, in the book of Jonah, is the challenges God's people not it challenges God's people not to exalt themselves over others. <clears throat> and um, Jonah believed that God was the creator of everything, but that was compassionate only toward the elect of Israel. And the book of Jonah affirms God's freedom, sovereignty, and power. God is free and he, he can never be bound by human misconceptions and um, so the people of Nineveh they confess that God is 
creator and king of the whole cosmos, but rest restrict his involvement to judgment, justice, and retribution. And see his acts of compassion, righteousness, and forbearance. They do not see his acts of compassion, righteousness, righteousness, and forbearance. So, God is free to bestow his mercy on anyone and anywhere he wills. Jonah's story contains a strong warning to all godly people. The, the elect may miss the blessing of seeing God's grace extended outside their own sphere because of their imposition of limits on God. So the literary form of the book of Jonah is that it has no prophecies and the book is largely narrative. It is best to understand the book as pro a prophetic parable. The book centers on the negative interaction between the Lord and his prophet Jonah. The prophet's follies and the prophet, yeah, prophet's folly encourages the godly reader to avoid Jonah's negative example and to be a messenger of God's mercy and judgment to the nations. <clears throat> Christ in the scriptures and the book of Jonah. Jonah proclaims the need to repent. And also in this book, we see how much Jonah's story is a type of Jesus's life, death, and resurrection. So the outline to the book of Jonah is, there's two, two parts of it is the prophet's fight from his commission, oh, flight from his commission to go to Nineveh, which is um, chapter 1, verse 1, to chapter 2, verse 10. And then the second part of it is the prophet's obedience to his commission to go to Nineveh, which is chapter 3, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 11. And um, I think I pretty much covered everything that um, for the introduction that I thought was very important. So um, I don't know if this would be inter interesting to anyone, but in... Um, 792 BC, Jeroboam II begins to reign in Israel. 770 BC, approximate time of Jonah. 745 BC, Assyrian Empire pushes westward under Tigla Pilizer. 722 BC, Israel is taken captive by Assyria. Assyria. 612 BC, Nineveh falls to the Medes and Babylonians. So, I mean, I learned a lot just by this part. You know, the introduction. This is, yeah, this is really helpful. I just highlighted what I thought was the most important. So, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it.